Hey guys, great to see you, Joe here, and thanks very much for joining me for another lesson. So all the usual stuff applies. If you find the video helpful or useful in any way, perhaps you could click on the like or the subscribe. And if you do social media, then please feel free to share these links on your Facebook and things like that. Okay, so on with this week's lesson. I just wanted to kind of help people get started with this kind of idea of playing chords and also playing licks within the same kind of song. So you, you, you're kind of accompanying yourself in a way. So you're playing the rhythm and you're breaking off to put some licks in and then you're coming back to the rhythm. Okay, so whatever way you do it, there are a number of ways you can do it. You can do it where you have an alternating bass within the chords and you're picking out melody that way. So that's probably the more advanced way, you know, where you kind of... <laughs> You know, you're kind of playing a melody and you're playing a bass at the same time. So that's a little bit more advanced than, say, playing... So, by, but also by doing that and starting with the very basics, then that's certainly the way to go, as I've already pointed out in some previous lessons you don't want to run before you can walk and by that what i mean is by attempting some of the more complex stuff you could in the long run be setting yourself back so it's best to start with the basics and then build your way up into doing the more complex stuff okay so with that in mind that's what this video is about and it's always a good idea when you're doing this to try and just play simple licks the blues is great for that because you can play these kind of repetitive things where you have and it kind of works over the one, the four, and the five. For the purposes of this exercise, we're just going to play a straight E blues. So like that, and then your A will be. And then we'll have a B7. Yeah, so just those three chords. And over the top of that, we're just going to play the seventh fret first string and the um, 8th fret, 2nd string. And also, you can think about, you know, the articulation of it, because that plays a massive part in everything you do. If you, you know, it's one thing just playing the notes, but then it's another imparting something of yourself, yeah, onto it. And that's the real aim. So once you can actually play the notes, then try and spend a little bit of time with the articulations. And by that, I just mean the bends in this instance, yeah? So that's where you come into play and you're trying to put your own mark on things. Like I always say, that's the most important thing of all, really, or certainly one of them. Okay, so if you start out with the E chord, Okay, so that's just a slight bend you can hear there. You don't have to, you can just play. And that's what you might have to play to start with, depending on whether or not you've done this type of thing before. Okay, so whatever's going to make it be in time for you. Don't start trying to kind of bend it if you, you know, the timing isn't there. Just, just play the basic. Just play it basic if it means you're going to play it in time. And then you can graduate onto the. So we're just playing four of those bends for each kind of chord, all right? So we got two, three, four. Now when we go to the A, we play one, two, three, four. Okay, so then we're playing three where we were. And then we're playing first and second strings, fifth fret. Now you see, that's a good case in point, articulations I was talking about. You, get, you might get to the point where you can play that A part there and slide down so you get that sound. And it's these little things which are going to make your playing sparkle, you know, and give it that little bit of magic, okay? So as I say, start simple, and then you can think about 
how can I kind of make each of these changes a little bit more interesting? So we've covered the E and the A. So when we come to the B, we're just playing what we played for the A, only we're moving it up two frets. So we're just playing the first and second strings on the seventh fret. Okay, so that, although it's very simple and things, to do it where it's in time and everything is another thing, okay? So you want to be trying to get this timing absolutely bang on. That's what's going to make it sound good at the end of the day. And also it prepares us to, you see, generally when we're trying to get started doing these things, our fingers want to stay put. So you're kind of thinking, right, I know I've got to go up here or whatever it's going to be and your fingers and your mind are locked into this rhythm and they don't always want to go anywhere and you're thinking yeah i'll go after the next one but they kind of just seem to want to stay there so you've got to force them and kind of uh, get them to start thinking about doing other things and so the same principles apply for single note stuff as well so you can just play a reoccurring kind of riff through something with single note stuff so you might have something let's say like Okay, so same principle, just a few little notes. Just Anyhow, you kind of get the idea of where I'm coming from with that. The only difference there was when I went to the B I played. That note, that was just the one thing. Okay, so that's just hammering on the second string, second fret, open E, a little bit of a bend, and then open. Okay, so what a good idea to do is, is to kind of get that rhythm solid and then just explore your pentatonic scales or just what feels right, you know. I, I'm a strong believer in the notion that you know, playing the wrong notes is no bad thing because it kind of educates you as to where, what not to play and things like that. So just start very simplistically and just maybe if you, if you want to do the single note stuff, then just add in, you know, three or four notes and, and just repeat it. And what that will do is it will really strengthen the kind of rhythm to lead thing that you're doing. And, you know, it will really build on that, whereby you, you're able to play these chords and, and suddenly start adding little simple licks. And from that will grow perhaps more complicated things, if that's what, you, you know, you're looking to do and things. But as I often say, start simple, make that sound good and then move on, you know, to something a little bit more challenging. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to share that one with you. I hope that it helps some of you out there, and I look forward to seeing you soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.